we are the sum of our experiences. If it is true that all humans are created equal, then we must start out as a blank slate. Almost the moment we are born, we start filling that blank slate with experiences. Say, a man wakes up after an accident with no memory of his husband and children. If he meets the same man again, will he fall in love again? Or will he just think that he should, because other people tell him that he used to love him? Is the man who loved the same man who's waking up in that bed? No one knows who found it, or even when. Probably not more than 20 years ago, because that's when Department 6 was found. We just call it the writing. Why? What's, what's written on it? I have no idea. How can it be that you have an entire department devoted to this thing and not know what it looks like? All right. Let's go over this again. What date is it, Agent Paul? It is perfectly normal to be confused about some things, Mr. Paul. As the brain tries to adjust to the loss of neural links, it scrambles to fill the void with anything available. You may find yourself having a hard time telling in which order the memories you do retain happened, or increasingly remember occurrences from a dream as if they were real. But you'll get better, right? Don't worry, Leonard. You'll get better. We cannot promise anything, Mr. Paul. But in cases like yours, a full recovery is often possible. Once you're back on your feet, you can return back to your job and try to live normally, to immerse your brain in a familiar environment. What is it you do? I work for the government. Oh, it does, there should be no problem, Mr. Paul. Trish, can you take a look at this? I told you to call me Lenny. No, you didn't. Really? I, I could have sworn. Come here. What you got there, Leonard? Blueprints for HQ. See this building. Building 48. The storage facility, right? That's what I thought. Officers. Get this. Your agency only has five departments? For a department that does not exist, it sure has a lot of staff. Agent Keller? Yeah? Have you ever heard of a Department 6? 
Yes. How come I've never heard of it until today? Yeah, well, I guess you just didn't think it was important. Okay, so we should fix our flyers. It's not just that. Half the agents I talked to at lunch said the agency has only five departments. Five. Just don't worry about Well, what do they do there? I cannot tell you. Because it's classified? No, because I have a direct order from the director of Department 6 not to tell you. If you want to find out, go there and see for yourself. I'm sure you can find the way. But I wouldn't advise it. And why is that? You seem happy lately, Paul. You don't need the extra hustle. But who am I kidding? You always want the extra hustle. We need to wait for a backup part. There's no time. Go! No one has seen the writing in years. It has been held in a vault underneath building 48 and guarded 24 7. However, you do not have to see the writing to be affected by it. Merely learning of its existence sets off a measurable reaction in your hippocampus. Long term exposure of subjects, including the researchers themselves, leads to rapid deterioration of memory, especially concerning the time spent with the object. It has been suggested that repeated exposure to the object may lead to more serious mental issues, which is why researchers are put on a rotation, not spending more than a few cycles with the department before being allowed to permanently forget about its existence. The director is in charge of staff rotation. What is it you do here exactly? I cannot tell you, director's orders. So who's heading this place anyway? The director. And that would be? Cannot tell you, director. Director's orders, I know. Oh, hey, Alison. Do I know you? Very funny. Why didn't you tell me you work here? Sir, I think you're confusing me with someone else. Let's go, Agent Paul. But... We're gonna be late. Late? I don't have an appointment. Of course you do, with the director. So you are the director? No, thank God. I just work here. What do you do here? Mostly personnel oversight, to introduce some people to the department. No, I mean, what does this department do? You don't know? Why did you think I was here? I thought you just forgot who the director was. Fiona Bell, suicide. Eric Miller, suicide. Carlos Hernandez, Killed six agents before being shot. Elena Hill, car accident, possible suicide. This department six sure knows how to pick its directors. So we're setting it now. Whatever that object is, it's properties are such that the president thought it's important enough to devote a task force for studying it. That task force eventually became department six. We're not sure which president actually because when you need to write everything down, it's as if you wrote nothing down at all. Sir, what are you doing? Why are you talking? Sir, please put down that letter opener. Letter opener? Sir, are you all right? It's time for lunch, Agent Paul. I do not trust the director. I do not know who he is. I'm sure I knew yesterday. Take out your pocket knife now, Ellison. Look under your desk. I want to know how many times I've been here. I asked Brunwick who the director is, but he said he was under orders not to refresh my memory. Maybe this is my last day at Department 6. If they rotate me out, you'll never see this video. I don't know whether to hope for that. Right now, knowing as much as I can still recall, I have an intense curiosity 
to find out what the writing is. But after three or four times, I should bow out. I don't want to... I don't want to end up like the directors. Be careful, Alison. Please, be careful. So, you went back to Department 6. I didn't go back. I've never been there before. That's what you said last time. Damn. You know, Paul, you're too damn curious. We've had this conversation now, what? Eight times? Give it a rest, go home, watch some telly, I don't know. In a week's time you'll have forgotten this conversation and can work here at Department 3 for the rest of your days. No, he can't. Agent Brunwick. Hello, Leonard Paul, pleased to meet you. Please follow me, Agent Paul. You can't do this, Brunwick. Protocol dictates that. I know what the protocol dictates, Agent Keller. If it's where anyone else, I'll be with you. But when Agent Paul returns, by his own accord, I'm obligated to take him back to his office. Director's orders. The director isn't thinking clearly. Perhaps not. One of all people did this. Could still be a coincidence, but we do use this hospital. Why would anyone do this? It may not be the first time. There's a reason the riding's been locked in the safe for the last few years. The effect intensifies not just by longer exposure, but also when you physically approach the object. After enough damage to the hippocampus, people start acting Erratically. Should I call the director? I already did. So. Good situation, agent. This is a healthy hippocampus. And this is yours, Leonard. See? The deterioration is accelerating. We have to find something that works soon. Any leads? I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall. I keep looking over my files, over the notes, but I keep running into the same dead ends. I think what you need is a fresh pair of eyes, Leonard. Fuck, easy said than done. How many neurologists do you think apply for a low-paying government job? Well, we do have a few. They're just not nearly as good as you, Alice. Try them. I'm too biased by my own experiences to look at these files without assuming tons of stuff. I need coffee. Fresh pair of eyes. Shall I fetch the files of the doctors who applied? No. No? You raised Dr. Carter's employment history of the department. Sir? Then come up with a fake name, change the name on all the medical reports she has filed with us, from Alison Carter to that. But sir, we can't do that. She wants a fresh pair of eyes, doesn't she? That is exactly what she's going to get. With all due respect, sir, that is highly unethical. I won't do it.
Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Imagine, imagine a brash, rowdy 18-year-old who loves getting into fights, hates the government, simply delights in causing chaos. What the heck? Now imagine that he turns his life around. Maybe he joins the military for a few years. He trains to become a policeman. Eventually, he joins the Secret Service and dedicates himself to protecting his country's constitution, being trusted enough to handle classified intelligence about national security. Now, suppose that he got into an accident. He loses his memory of the past 20 years, effectively resetting to that 18-year-old would hate the man he had become. The doctors assure you that the damage is so severe that there's no chance that he will ever regain his memory. The next day, that kid in an older man's body shows up at his place of employment, demanding access to his classified files. Should you give them to him? Of course not. Of course not. You'd have to earn that trust all over again. Imagine another 18-year-old kid, a good kid, Catholic family, never drinks a drop of alcohol, dedicates himself to helping others, and couldn't hurt a fly. Over the years, he falls in with a bad crowd. He starts drinking. One night, he causes a terrible car accident. He had a son, right? Yes, my Francis. Of course. How could I forget? Your Francis. After this accident, your Francis is bound to a wheelchair for life. You're consumed with rage, an all-encompassing desire to throw that driver down on the hard street, to kick the living shit out of him, to press down on his neck until he hears something snap, until he knows the pain he left your son in, until he too can only go to the toilet with someone holding him up. But before you can confront him, that man loses his memory reverting to that 18-year-old who couldn't even say a harsh word to anyone. Would you still take your revenge? I mean... Would you feel the same satisfaction torturing a man who doesn't even know why you're doing this to him? Who doesn't even fight back as you hit him because he doesn't know what's happening? I guess not. The man who did this to your Francis is already dead. He died along with his memories. The man who stands before you the next day is no more guilty of a crime than someone who was controlled by a god or a higher power, if such things existed. Tomorrow, Kevin Brunwick will have no recollection that he ever committed this sin. Yesterday's Kevin Brunwick had no intention of ever committing it. So there is nothing to reflect badly on her character. If no one is guilty, has the crime really been committed? Not no one. You'd be guilty for planning this. Tomorrow, I won't be. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? What does? All this fuss, and we don't even know what it looks like. Don't do this, Agent Bronwick.
Hallo? What? Yeah, I'll, I'll be right down. Please, direct that part. Don't do this. How many cycles do I have left? I have no idea. The doctor who did your tests was not great at record keeping. Don't give this back to me, even if I order you to. Director? Were we friends? I found some text messages. You called me Allison. I like working with you, Dr. Carter. Perhaps a bit too much. Agent Becker, Dr. Carter is not to return to Department 6 after this. It's a new day, the stars have set on my lonely way Yesterday's past, regrets are done, sunlight's up at the bed Cause in this love It's a new day, I light a cigarette, but break up is what you say. It's past time, the scars have peeled, and now I will be okay. Cause in the